this is the area I was talking about with the ferns, guys. You so I managed to get a good little bunch there, look, with some rhizomes. It gets covered in condensation, water dropping everywhere. We can't really have that, can we? It's fully condensated. Is that a word? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. Well, as good as it can be, right? So I think the tank behind me is looking absolutely fantastic, but there's still quite a few things that we can do to improve the look. For instance, I want to try and get some small terrestrial ferns, which is hard to do because everything looks massive that I'm seeing, you know, either in the shops or out in the wild. But I think I'm just going to have to hunt a little bit harder. I've noticed a little spot while I was out driving that I'm going to check out at some point. We also still need to put the lid on the top, and that's what we're going to do next. I want to do it out of glass. Now, this might go wrong. I might smash it. I might have to try something else. But as always, I keep it real on the channel, and if anything does go wrong, I'll keep that in the footage as well because it's all part and parcel of creating this amazing tank. You may have noticed as well guys there's still a little bit of clouding going on and the reason for that is because this isn't a normal tank is it? Normally you'd have the volcanic mineral all just under the bottom you know like an intake and an outtake at the top but what we've actually got is the water flowing all the way through the volcano mineral and then coming out into the water column so it's constantly trying to clean it rather than leaving any sediment where it is so that's why we're getting that but you know it's actually getting clearer and clearer all the time and it won't be long now till I can just remove this ugly looking filter that's just ruining the look. <laughs> I think what I am going to do though is possibly place a little nano filter here for just a little bit of water movement and keeping everything clean at the front and I might even be doing the same actually in Pancho's tank because as I said before you can see at the moment quite a lot of the old blood worms just sitting about because there isn't water flow due to just it being a you know a waterfall paludarium so yeah that's the two options you'll barely see them it's these tiny nano ones that I've got in this tank for instance look sense of scale it's absolutely it's like that big so that big in there you better get a notice i can hide it under there on that one i can hide it on the side on that one but anyway as i said before in a previous video i've got a spare tank that i want to use the glass for to create a lid for the new newt <laughs> the new newt paludarium so let's just go get that yeah so here it is i'm going to take it out of here and we'll get it out in the garden so i can start splitting off the silicon and we can get this glass because that's actually the perfect width as well which is just going to save us a lot of time So the first job's going to be just to split the silicon and then we can look at cleaning up the glass afterwards because it's going to get messy anyway so we might as well do it at the end. So that's one piece on. I just now need to measure out the back end here and I'll have to cut the other piece because it's too big to just slot in. It'll just hang right over the back, which will look rubbish. So I need to cut it and try and get a perfect cut. Obviously leaving a gap right at the very edge to allow the wires to come out. Okay, so it wasn't a perfect cut. As you can see, there's a tiny little bit of the corner here that's just not perfect, but we can put that in the back, won't really see it, and I can sand it down as best as possible as well. So all in all, not a bad effort. We'll see how it goes. Okay, there we have it. I think that's looking pretty neat. That little bit of the glass that was you know, a bit dodgy when it broke is there. So it's creating a nice little gap between the two panes, which is what we need because we do need ventilation. So I've got a gap there and I've got a gap at the front here. And there's also a gap at the back there, which also allows us to have our wires coming out. But they're all too small for obviously the newts to be able to fit through. Maybe that's too big. But time will tell when we get them and I'll be able to see their size and we can just make adjustments if we need to. You might be thinking, well, why did that pane not snap perfectly straight when I broke it? Well, it turns out that it was a little bit of silicon in the far corner that I hadn't scored enough through. So basically there was no score mark on the glass. So that last corner just took its own sort of route. But you know, you live and learn. But it turned out all right. So I'm really happy with how it looks. We may find that this doesn't even work and it just gets covered in condensation, water dropping everywhere. And if that's the case, then it's not a problem because we just try a different method. I've still got the mesh, remember? I've got some wood as well if I want to make a little frame. I've, there's other options. We'll just see how this goes first. We set up this dirty aquarium about a month ago now and it's looking immense, isn't it? The problem I've got when I set up aquariums is that I let them grow like this and then I just think they look too nice to trim. 
<laughs> but it definitely does need trimming because otherwise I'm going to get the same situation I get with all my tags as they just get completely overgrown and then I just have to rescape them. And I really like this one and I want to get it looking tidy again. Not it doesn't look tidy, but you know what I mean, more control. So this limnophilia here is too high. It's looking great, but it needs trimming down into sort of like an arch. And the Rotala Rotunda Folio, we need to trim that back and replant it as well. The dwarf hair grass, let's bring that right down. Let's bring everything down low so it's just got a, a place to restart from, if you like. Now, this is actually good because it will thicken everything out even more. So it's like thick, thick. I mean, it looks great. I don't want to do it, but I've got to do it. Otherwise, it just gets too far. Let's get on with it. Well, that's looking really good. That's turned out better than I thought. Yeah, it looks very, very neat. I will admit that. And I really did like the wildness of how it looked before, but that's actually going to grow back in no time at all. So you don't have to worry about that, especially with this light that I've got in here, which is the Flexi Mini. I've said that before. It's discontinued now and you don't think you can buy There might be a few things on eBay you can get it from or somewhere. I don't think you can buy it in shops anymore anyway. So now it's just a case of leaving this to grow back in again. And where I've trimmed those plants, two shoots will come off and we'll get an even thicker look. And also guys, in the last video, I told you that I will be breaking down the cave aquarium at some point don't worry i'm not doing it just yet i've got plenty of other projects first but i will be doing that to make room for the mud skippers i think this will be a really good tank for them now a load of you were like no you can't do it and i get this every time i say i'm going to break down the tank but imagine if i didn't ever restart tanks i, I wouldn't have anything to film it'd just be like the same stuff all the time I'm really keen to get some different aquatic life in here. Mudskipper is going to be cool, and I think this tank will be really suited for them. Okay, okay, so it's been a couple of hours since I put on the new gloss lids, and as you can see, we can't really have that, can we? It's fully condensated. Is that a word? Full condensation on the window. I'm going to put a little bit of cardboard under each little corner just to raise it up a little bit and just see if we can get some airflow going from that. If that works, then I can just try something that looks a bit better and more permanent with some acrylic. But to start with, just get some cardboard on. Right, so I've just raised it up like that much all the way around, which should be absolutely fine as well for our nukes when we get them. They're not going to get through anything like that, are they? So let's just see what that does, because it's basically looked like a, a full gap all the way around now. So air should be able to escape. So see how that is. Come back in a bit. Right, well, it's been an hour. Look, and raising the edges seems to have done the trick. I mean, there's a little bit of condensation above on the glass in the middle. But, you know, we can deal with that. That's not an issue at all, is it? As long as we can see, you know, from the front, the main viewing panel, I think that's worked a treat. So what I'll do now is I'm going to get some acrylic or maybe even some other spare pieces of glass and just try and get some little ra risers, razors, razors, risers, just to lift it up that much, you know, in key points on the edges and in the middle. We get that nice little gap for air to flow through. So it's now been 12 hours since we put the glass lid on. It's pretty clear, but you can still see there's quite a lot of condensation forming on the glass. I don't really want that at all but I've got one last thing I want to try before we ditch the idea potentially and move on to something else. I don't actually need to cover the whole top with glass, do I? I just need to make sure that the edges are in So because obviously the newts can potentially climb up the glass, but they're not going to be able to hang vertically upside down and get out, or I don't think they are anyway. So what I'm thinking of doing is just putting a strip of glass that goes all the way around the perimeter, and then it means the area in the middle is completely open and we should be okay. But to start with, I'll cover that as well anyway with netting just to make sure, but yeah, I think that'll be good. Let's try that. Right, we'll try again. Here's what I've done, guys. It's been set up now for a couple of hours. I wanted to make sure it was working before I showed you to save, keep changing it around and that, but that is going to work. Come on, isn't it? I mean, what I'll do is when I do get the newts eventually, I'll cover up this gap anyway, just to make sure they can't get out. Observe them, see what they do. But, you know, in my opinion, how on earth is something that doesn't have sticky feet, but does have the ability to grip, going to go inverted all the way around? You know, it's just not going to happen, is it? And if it does, we've got other options as well. But that... It's minimal impact on how everything looks, I think. It looks tidy, you know, and it's working. But overall, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? What I want to do now is go back to that wood where I got the moss, because I think I saw some mini ferns there. I want to see if they're still there or if I did actually see them. And then just, I think they'll look really good in this sort of area here. I think it'll look good with a little bit like that in that big open area there. So yeah, this is the area I was talking about, the ferns, guys. You can see here, there's so many of them. They're absolutely abundant and they grow really fast. They've got a rhizome just like our ferns. Interestingly, they've also got these sort of little nodules on the bottom and that's their mechanism for, you know, reproducing, which is cool. Apparently they sort of burst off at a later date. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we can see some smaller ferns in here. It's just a case of pulling them out without snapping the rhizome. And I've been unsuccessful so far. <laughs> 
Haha, we are successful in these guys. So yeah, there you can see there's the rhizome. That's the bit that it actually travels along and then grows out of. And that should actually spread out some more at some point. So I managed to get a good little bunch there, look, with some rhizomes. And there's some smaller ones as well. Like that's a nice little tiddler, look. That will be good. But these will be actually sat right down quite low anyway, below the rocky background. So they shouldn't come up too high. They're all ready for propagating, look, as well. That might be interesting. But anyway, back to the studio. <laughs> right, so we've got our ferns. Hey, there they all are. This one's a bit dubious and it's probably not going to work, but you know, it's worth a try. Anyway, so what I like to do next is take some filter floss. Hang on, let me wide angle this. There we go. Right, so take some filter floss and I've got a mix here look, of some mosses and some sort of aqua soil and just bits of organic matter really that we can just put in the middle of our filter floss like that. A little bit of soil as well, aqua soil. And then take the rhizome of one of our ferns and put it right in the middle like that. And then we just wrap it up and stick an elastic band on it. There we go, guys. Oh, there we go, guys. Just like that, look. See? And that can sit in the water. It will draw up the moisture and provide nutrition to the ferns. Right then guys, there we have it. I think that's looking really cool. Now I know some of you might not like the ferns in there. I've also added, look, as you can see there, some air plants just in those corners. I'll put it, oh, I'm pointing at the camera. You can't see me pointing at the camera, <laughs> idiot. Yeah, some air plants in that middle section and this close section here as well. And I think they look really good actually. And I really like the ferns as well. I know some of you will be thinking, Oh, I look better, more minimalist, minimalist. I do too, but also I really like the realism we're getting with those ferns. It really does add a proper sort of sense that we're on the riverbank or something like that, because you're gonna get ferns in riverbanks, aren't you? All right, it isn't a riverbank, but you know, that's the look we're going for. Anyway, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Let me know what you think. I'll just show you it a bit better. Let me know if you like the ferns or if you liked it better before with more minimalistic look and, and you know, just the, just the moss. But as I said, I really like it. So there we have it guys, the paludarium's all ready, just need stocking now. But you know, due to what's going on at the moment, it might be a little bit difficult to start sourcing aquatic animals, <laughs> you know, priorities and all that. But I'm going to try my best, see what I can do, hopefully be able to add some newts soon. But let me just give you a little preview of everything we've got coming up. So we've got a tank stocked full of plants there, a tank stocked full of plants there. The Rainbow River has been taken over by Busa Philandra and Anubius plants. <laughs> And the freshwater reef tank has currently been taken over as a plant storage area as well. And this is all for the big tank, which is coming soon. Before we do all that though, we're gonna be doing our no filter dirted bowl aquarium. I've never done a no filter dirted bowl or any tank before actually. So that would be good. Cause obviously this one is a dirted tank but it's got a filter, so I wanna do a no filter bowl. Also guys, I've just had a delivery of this terrarium with cabinet and also in here, all of these terrariums and cabinets oh so there is absolutely tons of cool stuff for us coming up and i think we should just focus on creating amazing environments and then at some point we'll be able to stock them all later which is actually really good because they'll be settled in really well and absolutely perfect for the new animals <laughs> 